Kia ora, goeie morgen, good morning to the South Africans. Good evening actually down that side and good morning to the New Zealanders this, this morning. Guys and girls, my name is Jan Fillion, all the way from Welcome Bay down in Taranga. I'm a financial advisor and I help South Africans with all their financial needs down here as well as risk insurance. So that is what I do. Um, down from the Bay of Plenty this morning, we, we have Kerry. Kerry Salby, she was one of the people that has just arrived back in New Zealand um, from South Africa. So she's one of the few lucky ones that could get out. And we um, are going to talk to her a bit this morning. So good morning to everybody who just joined us. I see we've got about 15 people there. But good morning, Kerry. How are you? Hello. Good morning. I'm well, thank you. How are you? Um, Kerry had an early morning because she actually misspelled her name, her own name. So <laughs> Sorry, guys. It's been a journey. <laughs> Kerry, um, you are a dual citizen, you're a South African, and you are a New Zealand citizen. Yes, I am both. Okay. Well, that a, did, did, did that have a good experience for you or not? Um, I'm going to be honest. <laughs> I never wanted to not have my South African passport more, but only because at the end there, they weren't letting anyone with South African passports out, regardless of visas, where we had lived, dual citizenship anything and that honestly I, I think that was my breaking point almost at the end there I was like okay oh. um, but you left South Africa on your um, New Zealand passport uh, yeah. no I left South Africa on my South African passport towards the okay. end of the day um, I think the consulate actually tried to help us and um, there was a bunch of people working Vera Bosch um, was working to try and help us get you know get back here and so they ended up saying anyone with dual citizenship okay. or families or pr in another country can leave so thank all goodness right. and when did when did this all start how, how did this happen i want to say for COVID, but after COVID, how did it, how did it start yeah, I mean, so, it I mean it's, been, it's been a journey of trying to get cameron's part uh, cameron's visa which is fine but um it all Cameron, kind of, Cameron is uh, Scary's husband. Uh, he's also South African. It's his first time out of the country. So bless his heart. I've now taken him the whole way around the world and I've just been like, enjoy. Um, but yes, yeah, so we were actually meant to leave. I am a, a teacher, a qualified teacher. And in South Africa, I was specializing in Down syndrome education. So we were actually meant to leave South Africa in December of 2019. And instead, my um, boss at the time just said, "Listen, please, can you stay until the end of first, until the end of term one, and then, um, you know, just to settle sort of the little boy that I was working with into school, yeah. which I did. Um, and I don't have any regrets because I actually love him to absolute death. But um, obviously, we were meant to leave before COVID hit, and then um, as we were meant to leave, COVID happened. So um, yeah, it's been an absolute journey. I think you know we had the I was watching a lot of the lives from Jacinda Arden and um, Winston Peters and whatnot, and we were told Kiwis come home while you still can. That's right. And uh, I was like, okay. So we started making plans to come home and we woke up the next day and all our flights had been canceled and people that had gone to the airport to try and leave, their flights were canceled. And it was just, honestly, it was like, it was straight away. It wasn't even, um, there was no time, you know? So. <laughs> I don't think anyone actually realizes how fast it actually happened when you're stuck in another country and they're like, come home. And then all of a sudden there's no way to get home. In, in South Africa, in which town were you guys? So we were in KZN. Um, we were actually living in a flat. So we got, we both had resigned from our jobs previously. Obviously we knew we were leaving. We um, had put up notice on our flat. Okay. and everything so we yeah we were stuck so when lockdown happened obviously they were like you can't move house <laughs> so we were stuck in an empty flat um no jobs had to pay electricity and stuff thank goodness we both have very loving parents who were able to help us because a lot of people didn't actually have that and uh, and you, you guys flew out from Johannesburg yeah so we had to finally I mean you know it was a lot of back and forth between by the time we even got to Joburg it was constant, like phoning the New Zealand consulate, phoning Qatar Airways, phoning, because initially we were supposed to have a flight that was a chartered flight. Okay. Um, 
And that was going to take a really long time. That was from uh, Joburg to Jakarta, Jakarta to Sydney, Sydney to Auckland. Um, yeah, and being a chartered flight, it wasn't going to have any creature comforts of like, you know, TV and whatnot. So, um, and that fell through, which was very, very disappointing. Um, and then we had... Um, another flight booked, and then New Zealand actually said that they were going to do a repatriation flight. So okay. for us, I was like, okay, amazing. Um, and those flights ended up being five and a half thousand New Zealand dollars each. So uh, <laughs> I was like, okay, uh, what do we do now? And actually, you know, we're so blessed. Our friends banded together and created a fundraiser. Um, and I had already sold my car in South Africa, so we had enough for one ticket. And our friends created a fundraiser and helped us raise enough money within four days to get oh, that right. ticket. Oh, right. Super well, blessed. That's, that's a big amount of money to raise, actually. Yeah, it was like 60, at the time, it was like 66,000 Rand or something. Um, and yeah, so we raised that money in four days. Okay. How did you guys get from Durban to Johannesburg? Okay, so um, then what happened was the repatriation flight uh, fell through, unfortunately, because Qatar Airways decided they were going to do chartered flights. Okay. And a repatriation flight can only happen if there's absolutely no other no other way. Hmm. Um, and so we found out that in order to get this chartered flight, we would need to get to Johannesburg. Um, and luckily, we were only coming from KZN, um, but there were people coming from Cape Town, which is an immense trip. Um, and so, yeah, so we had to figure out that, which was fine. We um, got a, we got a, my stepdad actually is the most amazing person. And he um, drove us down. We got a letter from um, the consulate to say, you know, please give them safe passage. Um, and remarkably, we only got stopped once. Okay. So, and they didn't even ask for papers. They just said to us, take your temperature. And I was 32 on the on the thermometer so essentially i should have not been alive but that's fine so i don't know how great their thermometers are <laughs> um but yeah we actually need to get to pretoria we, and we didn't need to get to joburg or our tambo we had to go to pretoria to the um qatari embassy okay so yeah so we all got there and you know it was there was people from not just from new zealand there were people from france um sweden poland uh korea um, Australia, it was, there were so many people. There was about 400 people on the, on the road. Mm. And, and, and how many of those, only, only the, the New Zealanders flew with Qatar or did all of no. them fly on the same no. flight? So all of us got on the same flight, absolutely zero social distancing on that first flight. Um, okay. we were all crammed in there like sardines and, um, we all went to Doha, so that central hub, and then from oh. there, everyone kind of split and went to the places that they needed to. What happened to Doha? Were temperatures taken again or so? Um, yeah, no. So, okay, so when we left when we uh, left the Pretoria consulate, we got our temperatures taken at Oa Tambo. Okay. Um, and our bags got sniffed by sniffer dogs, and there were, uh, like, so many police, so many security um, so many sort of personnel. It was it was very intense. And then um, when we got to Doha, no one took our temperatures. We just landed and we were there for 19 hours. 19 hours in Doha. Goodness me. Yeah. So I you for 19 hours. Okay. So I mean, they have options. The, obviously, the whole airport's closed. There was, um, I think, Burger King was open, and I want to say like a yeah. Japanese place was open okay. um, and so we and there might have been a coffee shop act as well actually so we um, were very very blessed and decided to um, dive into the credit card and go over our limit and we went to the lounge okay so there was also a hotel available so I think if there's anyone sort of making that trip and they have um, babies or young children um, there is a hotel available but with the hotel, you don't get food. You, you, there is room service, but you just get a bed and a shower. Um, whereas with the lounge, it's a bit more, they feed you the whole time. There's constant coffee, constant drinks, okay. and there's showers available. But I can't see it being um, ideal with a baby. That's right. So you at least could freshen up a bit in this 19 hours. 
Yeah, and we ate our heart's content. We ate like the restaurant. I was like, we are making that money up. We will eat everything. So it's essentially what, what we're doing. What does the cost of going to one of those lounges? Um, okay, so it was very expensive. It was a thousand rand um, a person. Okay. And it's only for six hours. So we have completely maxed our credit card pretty much, but it was it was worth it. Honestly, I couldn't have seen us surviving 19 hours there. Okay. Um, and yeah, we were super blessed actually. We'd helped a couple people on the other groups to try and get back and we'd given a lot of information. And one of the ladies was so grateful. Her name's Sonia. She actually paid for one of our stays at the lounge. Um, oh, great. Okay. And sort of graced us with that. And it was it was honestly amazing. Yeah. Well, it's hectic times. And I'm, I'm glad a lot of people is taking hands during this hectic time. Yeah. Right? It's, it's absolutely wonderful how people come together when, when something bad like this strikes the whole world. A hundred percent. The support is, it's crazy. Uh, we okay. had people on our fundraiser that I hadn't seen since I was like eight years old. Okay. Don't help okay. us get home. I mean, that is, that's insane. But at least it sounds as if you were not a very naughty eight year old thing. If yeah, I know. I was, I was trying to think back. I was like, was I very nice to this person? Did I do anything I shouldn't have? But like, yeah, apparently I was a nice person. So that's good. Okay, it helped. <laughs> But, but the journey didn't stop in Doha. What happened yeah. after Doha? Uh, so much, Jan. Um, the flight to Doha was not comfortable at all. I mean, just to lay that out there for anyone flying, it wasn't, there were no sort of, there was no blankets, there was no pillows. It was, um, you know, it wasn't comfortable. The flight, the plane was a bit old or whatever, but the Doha to Sydney flight was lovely. Um, it wasn't very full. Um, we were able to sort of lie down. Cameron and I had three seats between us, so I slept a lot of the time and um, the staff were lovely. The food was great. And once you get to Sydney, um, you land. Or I'm not sure, I can't speak for Melbourne, but once you get to Sydney, we landed. They asked us to keep remain seated. Um, people from Sydney Airport in full PPE. It was it's okay. quite a weird experience to fly with your air hostesses in PPE. Um, so the, for the whole flight, they, they wore PPE? Yep, big glasses, um, masks, Eskimo-like, the whole the whole nine yards. So It was actually hectic, but on the other side, they are taking a chance on you guys. A hundred percent. And that's also something I just want to... Um, you know, really like drive home to people is that these people are essentially risking their lives to get us home and you need to be gracious and you need to be understanding and they're tired and they're scared and they aren't with their families and you just need to be as understanding as possible. But yeah, so then... Big shout out to them, let's say, honestly, well done. Honestly, like yeah. these people are putting their lives at risk to get us to where we need to be and I think we all need to remember that, you know? That's right. Um, all right, you arrive in Sydney... Full yeah, so we arrived in Sydney. No, not for us, luckily, not but we did, need to okay. wear, we did need to wear masks. And um, you, we stopped. The plane was a little bit hot. You know, you're excited. You're running around. I was, like, grabbing my stuff. And um, I changed into shoes out of my jandals, my slots, which I shouldn't have done. And you stand in a really long line. You walk for a bit, and then they start taking your temperatures. And my temperature was 37.5. Okay. Which is fine. It's kind of the threshold, but um, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You would only sort of send a kid home from school if their temperature was 38 or whatever. But um, okay. 37.5, and they said to me, you know, we're going to have to test you again. So there were a few people that had had to have tests done, okay. and so I was so like, oh. by by now you were booked on the, on the, the next flight already. Am I right? Yeah. So we were supposed to be leaving the next day. All right. All right. So you had to stay over in Sydney. Yes, and you get put up in a hotel um, and they feed you and they arrange transport to and from the airport. All right. Um, and you don't get a choice where you stay. You kind of just, you go where you're told. Um, and they, you know, so don't argue that. Just do what you're okay. told. Um, but yeah, so we uh, we sat down for about sort of two minutes and we were the last people to really get tested. And they took my temperature again and it hadn't moved. And they were like, I'm so sorry, you're going to have to go get a COVID test. And my heart just like fell down. I was just like, no, because I knew that they weren't going to come back immediately. 
And um, it was late, we were tired. And so we went and we had to go and get through immigration and go through another long corridor. And we had to have our COVID test done, both Cameron and I. Oh, okay. Um, and it's not as hectic in Australia as it is in South Africa, if that makes anyone feel better. They um, don't go as high and it's not for as long. So yeah, so we went and had that. And the lady said to me, right before we had it done, she was like, you're fine. She was like, I can see that you're fine everything's okay let me take your temperature again which she did and it was 73 uh 30 not 73 it was 37. Okay. and she said to me um listen i'm going to go and chat to the head nurse and i'm going to see if we can actually just get this like you can just go and you can leave tomorrow so i said okay perfect she did that and unfortunately the nurse said no we need to be safe and i totally understand that zero cases in new zealand um, so yeah, so we had to then go and she said, listen, you're going to be put in an isolation hotel until your test comes back. You and your husband will not be able to be in the same room together. And that was me. I was like done. I was crying. I was like, I can't believe I'm going to be separated from him. Um, I was really upset. It's so scary being in a new country. You don't really know the rules and regulations. I mean, I've lived in South Africa for a really long time, regardless of being a Kiwi and um, yeah, for me, it was, it was stressful, um, but the staff are divine. They are so lovely. You were so looked after. They could see how upset I was that first night. They did three welfare, welfare checks before we fell asleep to make sure that I was okay and calm and safe. And, um, yeah, it was, they're amazing. Oh, oh well. Yeah. So, unfortunately. So, you were in the one hotel and then you are now being moved to a different hotel? No, so we hadn't even left the airport yet. Um, oh, okay. Our, okay. our people who were on the flight had already gone to their like nice, you know, overnight hotel, and um, we were getting taken to another one by a um, like a private car. Okay. Yeah. So um, then our flight was meant to be leaving right away the next morning at because um, we had to. So once you land in Sydney, you then have to book a flight with Air New Zealand. So it's not a um, it's not a connecting flight. You do have to do two separate flights. Okay. And so, yeah, so we had to book a flight with Air New Zealand and we were supposed to be leaving at 9.55 in the morning. Obviously, our test had not come back by then. And so we had to um, rearrange our flights, which was fine. They rearranged them. But unfortunately, the next flight out was three days later on Tuesday morning. Yeah, so um, I was kind of just at the stage rolling with the punches. I was like, what can you do? Um, there's nothing I can do about it as long as I came back negative. Yeah. So Cameron's test came back and his was negative. Okay. And I figured, okay, mine's also going to be negative, but his came back at about 2 p.m. on Saturday. Um, and mine came back at about 7 p.m. on Saturday. And we were luckily COVID free. But you, st you guys were still split apart now. Yeah. So then we had to apply for cohabitation. We had to sign a bunch of things and acknowledge that if one of us developed symptoms, the other one would, regardless of our negative test. And um, yeah, so Saturday night again, uh, separate rooms, but we had Wi-Fi and everything. So Cameron and I literally were just on the phone to each other the whole time. So it wasn't like we were alone. Um, and let me just tell you everyone, the Wi-Fi in Australia and New Zealand is like, Oh my gosh, it is amazing. I everything's so clear. You don't get there's no buffering. <laughs> and you, you were used to South African speeds. Yeah. So him and I could speak for like six hours and I saw him the whole time. It didn't yeah. cut the call once. Um, it was amazing. I was like, this is phenomenal. Um, and so yeah, so then we the next morning I woke up. I, obviously we were both still very, very jet lagged. And I woke up to my phone ringing and about 15 missed calls from Cameron um, because they were going to put him into my room. So that okay. happened on Sunday morning, which was awesome. All right. Um, I just want to say to, to anybody watching, if, if you got guys got any questions at this stage, yeah. please feel free to ask or ask them on the on the different forums and I'll pop them up for Gary just to answer that to us. So Sunday morning, Cameron joined you. Yes, so then we were in the room. Honestly, it was so nice because then I had someone to like make me coffee and tea. And <laughs> um, so yeah, it was, and we were, they honestly, they looked after us. We had biscuits, 
we had okay. fresh fruit, we had yogurt, we had chips, we had um, cereal, we had uh, beautifully cooked meals. Um, it was lovely. Okay. So you, you were at least well cared for. Very well cared for. Honestly, we were allowed to go up to the roof for 15 minutes a day. Um, obviously, if there was enough nurses, because everything needs to be supervised. Um, and because we were at a proper COVID, um, like a COVID isolation hotel, you weren't allowed to leave your room at all. You had to be very, very careful and you had to wear a mask at all times. Okay. And at least your rooms had bathrooms and those type of stuff. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. No. Bathrooms, hot water, massive TV, um, a microwave, a kettle, a fridge. You could order Uber Eats if you wanted and it was lovely. And the food was delivered to your room? Yeah, and so it was delivered frozen and you needed to warm that up yourself because obviously there was an issue with um, sort of, I guess, outside parties and whatnot. But the food okay. was phenomenal. All right. So good. Good. It was not like your proper frozen meals. It was like a um, completely, uh, I think they'd cooked it and then frozen it straight away. Okay. Um, and so it was very fresh. It was lovely. Oh, well. It didn't sound too bad, but I mean, you guys were on, on, on flights for how many days? What, eight days? Seven yeah, days. so by the time we got to New Zealand, we'd been traveling since the 19th, and we arrived here on the 26th. That's seven days, yep. That's probably yeah. the longest flight ever to New Zealand. Oh. So. <laughs> <laughs> I was destined to get home, guys. I would have traveled for like three weeks if I had to. I fully understand that. <laughs> You should actually uh, try the Guinness Book of Records for the longest flight to New Zealand and see. Yeah, I mean, honestly, when we got on the Air New Zealand flight um, and as we landed, the pilot said, Kia ora, I know that a lot of you have been traveling for um, a very long time and it was so happy to be here, but I just want to let you know that you're safe in your home. Welcome back. And I just started crying. I was just so emotional and it was just so That's nice to hear that. Word. It's actually, it's actually lovely. Uh, people who's never been to New Zealand, the way they accept you here at customs is totally different. It just makes you actually want to stay here. It make you feel, I'm so glad I'm back home. So Absolutely agree with you. Like, they were so, they were like, you're safe now. It's okay. Yeah. You're home. We're going to look after you. Um, they were just absolutely divine. Honestly, it's, yeah. I'm, I have forgotten how much I love my home and I will never take it for granted again <laughs> yeah. um, somebody is asking the same question as this one I, I, I want to ask you next so what is happening at the new zealand airport <laughs> okay so at the new zealand airport you um get taken off the plane um row by row so yeah. you um it's not everyone at one time and there is the like it's lined with people just with security and police and whatnot you don't have to wear a mask okay, okay. Which is fantastic. i have asthma so I was wearing those material masks and I was just struggling. So yeah, no mask and you um, go through and they do. You fill out a form, um, obviously your landing form, which everyone fills out. And it's now had an added piece to it about COVID. Okay. And um, you get your temperature taken and you do have to say whether you'd had a COVID test before. So obviously we had had our COVID test. And then, yeah, you get taken through, they take your temperature and then from there you figure out if you're going to a managed isolation, so if you've got any symptoms or if uh, your temperature is a bit high or if you're going to a normal quarantine hotel. All right. And I've you only find out where you're going when you're on the bus, so when you get there. <laughs> Were you tested again? No, I wasn't, no, 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 I wasn't tested again, but my temperature was taken. All right. And there, is, there is a place to get tested, so there's a lot of like um, medical sort of curtains and whatnot. Was your temperature better than in Australia? Yeah, it was 36.8. Okay. okay, at least. <laughs> oh, gosh. Before I started taking my temperature, I, like, took my jersey off. I was wearing, like, slops. I was like, there's no way that I'm having a hot temperature again. So every precaution. <laughs> oh, yeah. And then the treatment so far, you guys are still in this isolation. Am I right? Yeah. So currently we are at the Crown Plaza in um, Auckland. Um, okay. And honestly... I couldn't actually be more grateful or thankful. Uh, it's a lot more relaxed. You're allowed to walk around whenever you want, sort of around the hotel. Um, okay. There's a smoking area for smokers. You can go on an hour walk or 45 minutes walk a day. It is managed. So you go from here to like a little um, park and then there's like a little section that you're allowed in and you can sort of do your running or whatever in there. Okay. Okay. 
I didn't. I just stood there with my umbrella, but like you can run if you want. Um, and yeah, it's lovely. The people are divine. I mean, you can order Uber Eats. Unfortunately, we're still on uh, in South African credit cards. So I'm desperate for like health pizza, but there's no way that we were going to spend that money on our South African rands. But yeah, it's the people are lovely. Yeah. Hey, man. Hey. So and our room is. Honestly, like we have a massive window overlooking Queen Street. We have a huge bed, a TV. We have a couch in our room, a bath, um, everything. Uh, oh, our breakfast has actually just arrived. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. <laughs> but well, yeah. It's, it's the only time for me to say goodbye to you. I know, yeah. Breakfast. Then you can go and have breakfast. So. It's, um, I'll show you actually, if I can, how it arrived. Wow. What are you having this morning? Um, so you choose what you want sort of the day before or the, they give you a menu. So it arrives like this. All right. Um, and let's see what I have. I think so we have a pastry. Okay. Cereal. Oh, yum. Fresh fruit. All right. All right. Uh, fresh and juice. Okay. Okay. Apple. An apple a day for the doctor. Yep. They're very, they're very concerned about your health. And then, oh, yum. Um, oh, my goodness. That's bacon, eh? Yeah. <laughs> bacon, hash browns, and eggs. And you are very, very looked after. Honestly, I there's nothing that I um, could fault here. The people, one of the security guards actually came to us yesterday, and it made me um, forget, actually, how important your mental health is in New Zealand. Yeah. And one of the security guards came to us and he said, you know, guys, we're here to help. Um, if there's anything you need, if you just need someone to talk to, if you are isolated, please just come and reach out to us. We're happy to talk to you. Right. And again, I wanted to cry. I was just like, thank you. Thank you so much. Like, you know, it was just, oh, thank you so much. Yeah. How, how is the mental health keeping up with the place you guys have been going? Um, yeah, I'm not going to lie. Uh, not great. I think... Um, I've really struggled, I think, just because it's been a huge journey and um, it's been a lot of disappointment. I think, you know, I hate to say it, but I feel like it's almost been a bit traumatic because you've woken up every day with bad news. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's fine. I think where we are, you know, there's so many ready people available to help. We'll be That's fine. Right. That's right. Question from, from a Facebook user, do you have to pay for the isolation room? No. So you, we don't have to pay for it. Um, uh, I think as being a Kiwi, and even if you're not a Kiwi, you don't have to pay for it at the moment. Everything's handled by the government. Um, I don't know, obviously, if that's going to change in the future, though. All right. But you you have to pay for certain meals? No. Uh, yeah. Like, if you want to get Uber Eats um, uh, or if you want to get a delivery, you can also get Countdown delivered. Um, okay. And then there's a coffee station on one of the floors that you can go and get coffee. Okay. Okay. Uh, when can you leave and go home? Good okay, so yeah, that is something I'm very excited. Um, as much as it is lovely here, I'm excited to see my friends and stuff. I've waved at one of my friends from the window yesterday. <laughs> We're on the 16th floor, so it was like, um, we can leave and go home. We're actually not sure. The isolation period is for 14 days. Obviously, if you become symptomatic, regardless of whether it's COVID or not, you do have to stay longer. Um, but yeah, we find out, I think, in the next couple of days, one of the Ministry of Health people will call us and let us know our date. All right, so at least another another um, 12, 12, days, 12 right. days, basically. Yeah. Around there. I think like around um, June 8th, I think, is what we figured out, but I'm not 100% sure on that. And I mean, you, you probably would have had your temperature taken again before the time. No, right? so, yeah, so at the, here at this hotel, they don't take your temperature unless you have to, but they do come okay. around and just do like a welfare check and see that you're fine once a day. Okay. Oh, that's great. That's yeah. Great. <laughs> All right. And uh, if you guys are, are really looking out for a house pizza, let me know. I'll, well, from our side, we'll sponsor you each a house pizza. Oh, my God. Tell me nice which evening. You're amazing, Jan. Thank okay, you. so that's from our side. Um, I don't know which is the nearest house pizza to you. Um, let me know about that, and um, I'll see that. Oh, Jan, I could never thank you enough. Guys. You're amazing. Right. Cameron will give you a free haircut one day. <laughs> No, thanks a lot. Yeah, by the way, uh, hubby is a is a hairdresser. Are you going back? Barber, yeah. 
say that yeah so i am um, i actually have a job um lined up in christchurch already uh, this oh, was before great. covid unfortunately um because covid did hit it has been frozen but i'm sure that it'll be unfrozen at some stage oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. as a teacher i'm sure i could pick up relief work as well and i'm registered with the council and a kiwi so i'm not right. too worried i'm very very lucky <laughs> we are we are doing a, a south island trip um in a in a few months i think it's somewhere okay. in october and um yep if, if we're there, I'm going to come happy. and say hi to you. Absolutely. And Cameron would do a free barber's cut for that whole pizza. So there you go. <laughs> no, it's fine. Uh, let me know about the house pizza. And thanks for being uh, part of our show this morning. Uh, no really problem. Fun having you here. And just I wanted to say, if anyone does have any questions or they are concerned, if you um, are okay with it, they're happy to, I'm happy for them oh, to yeah. pop me a message and just help anyone out. And, and I know you're going to get a lot of friend invites now and people <laughs> want to come over and stuff like that. So. Yeah, I mean, obviously, I can't give any sort of advices to INZ, and yeah. I don't know, but I can give it as much advice as possible about that journey and sort of what's to be expected. I think it makes right. it so much easier. All right. Gurney, thank you very much. I'm going to pop thank you out you of the Thank you very much, bye. <laughs> okay. Thanks, eh? Bye. Okay. Bye. All right, guys and girls, that was Gary Selby all the way from South Africa, traveled to New Zealand and currently in isolation here. Wow, what a journey that was. All right, that's me this morning. Lovely sunrise, open skies. Uh, it's still cold down here, my friend. It's about 8 degrees this morning for a startup, and then the weekend it looks like it's going to go a bit rainy. We, myself, are probably traveling down to the New Plymouth Way this, this weekend just to have a see and look what's happening down that side because I haven't been to New Plymouth yet, so... From uh, Friday onwards, I'll be traveling the country down that side until the Queen's birthday, then return back to Bay of Plenty. So we'll take a lot of footage for you guys and share that on the page as we go along. Guys, and this weekend also our uh, talent competition comes to an end. I think it's on Monday or so that it comes to an end. We'll choose a winner by that time. So thank you very much. Thanks to everybody who listened to us every morning, and we'll see you soon. Thank you. Bye-bye.